Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on what is now Hurricane Ian. So Ian has intensified into a hurricane and is likely going to be intensified much further. As a matter of fact, a Cat 4 is expected from this cyclone here. And so before I go into all the necessary details with it, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update video on the tropics. And to show your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. Okay, and so we are taking a look at current infrared satellites of the Caribbean. And so we are seeing that here we have Ian uh, churning to the west of Jamaica. So fortunately, uh, major impacts are not expected across the island. However, uh, the outer bands could still result in some rainfall and thunderstorms across sections of the country today. So please be aware of that happening. And please remember that uh, an extensive period of heavy rainfall could result in flash flooding in flood prone areas so please take necessary precautions today guys and so this should be uh, what's going to be happening across most parishes maybe some periods of sunshine but an additional one to three inches of rainfall are expected across the island today but then as for other areas such as the cayman Islands, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at the cyclone and so there we have it it is affecting portions of the cayman islands as i speak and these hurricane conditions will be more likely in grand cayman so so uh, this, uh, the area is under a hurricane warning as such conditions are expected as we're going to be heading into later today. So guys, uh, just please stay safe and do not take any unnecessary risks. And then as we're going to be heading in tomorrow, the cyclone is going to be making its way up towards Cuba and then eventually into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, having Florida as its next target and so let's go ahead and look at the cone forecast as well as what the models are showing and then the current conditions out there okay and so uh here we have this cone forecast from the national hurricane center of ian and so as of now it has maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour and it is making its way to the northwest at 14 miles per hour and we see that we have a hurricane warning as i said that is in place for uh Grand Cayman right now. Meanwhile, Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, they're under a tropical storm watch uh, as tropical storm conditions are possible. And some of those tropical storm force winds in Grand Cayman are likely to have already begun in the island. And so uh, it is likely that Ian will rapidly intensify into a major hurricane uh, very early tomorrow morning. I really wouldn't be surprised if it does so before. And so as for the rest of the uh, watches and warnings, so there is a hurricane warning that is also in effect for the Cuban province of Isla de Uventud, Pinar del Rio, and Artemisa. Meanwhile, a tropical storm warning that is in blue, that's in effect from the Cuban provinces of La Habana, Mayabeque, and Matanzas, as well as the uh, lower Florida Keys from Seven Mile Bridge westward to Key West, and then also for the dry Tortugas. So those areas can expect tropical storm conditions from Ian in the next few days. And then there is a storm surge watch that is in effect for the Florida Keys from the Card Sun Bridge westward to Key West, the Dry Tortugas, Florida Bay, and Clot River southward to the Card Sun Bridge as well as Tampa Bay. And a hurricane watch, and that is in pink, that is in effect for Englewood to the Anclote River, including Tampa Bay. And then a tropical storm watch is in effect for Englewood southward to Uchokoloski. I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. And so uh, the storm surge is that inundation of the coastline as a result of the winds of the cyclone pushing the water onshore and resulting in coastal flooding. And so storm surge uh, can be extremely devastating. And so if you're along the coast, you're advised to move inland into a safe location. And please do not take any unnecessary risks. Please listen to your local officials, guys, because uh, it is likely that Ian is going to be a catastrophic hurricane. Uh, but fortunately, it is expected to weaken but that doesn't make it any less dangerous uh, as we're going to be heading into the latter part of this week and so let's go ahead and now take a look at current conditions in the vicinity of the cyclone and so uh, we're seeing here that for the wind shear it is in a region of conducive shear which is marked by those greens that means that the wind shear those upper level winds are not uh, interfering much with the cyclone and the yellow indicates neutral shear the red means unfavorable shear and so while Ian is going to be remaining in the northwestern 
moving and intensifying. It isn't expected to encounter that unfavorable shear. However, uh, while it is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico, the shear is going to increase as well as dry, uh, stable conditions. And so that is what is going to be helping to result in weakening as the storm approaches Florida. And so uh, looking at the ocean heat content map now, we're seeing that that is off the charts in the Northwestern Caribbean. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Ian manages to intensify into a major hurricane uh, earlier than expected. So uh, these conditions are just so favorable right now for the cyclone. It is really just getting itself together and taking advantage of all of this before uh, more unfavorable conditions come for the system. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what two of the major models are expecting, uh, the GFS and the Euro. And so uh, looking at the GFS model here, this is for tomorrow on Tuesday, the 27th of the month. And so there we have GFS showing that we will be having the system with a pressure, a minimum pressure of 980 millibars uh, approaching the west side of Cuba. And then by Wednesday, we see that the model has the system crossing into, into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, definitely intensifying because we see a lower pressure here of 950 millibars. And when we have a lower pressure and we see these uh, circular black lines called isobars uh, being so very close to each other, that indicates a strong system and an intensifying system if we continue to see a decrease in the pressure, which we see when we look later on the day on Wednesday. However, there we have those dry conditions likely going to be infiltrating the system. And if we look at it, uh, Ian is not expected to be very symmetrical. And then as we head to Thursday, we see that we have the system beginning to weaken. Uh, we see all of this dry air now making its way into the system. And when that happens, we typically have less activity taking place and thus a weakening cyclone. And then by Friday, the model is showing that it is going to be making landfall uh, along the Florida Panhandle. So uh, fortunately, the storm is expected to weaken before landfall. But again, it is, a, uh, it is still going to be a dangerous situation out there. So please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe, guys. And then looking at what the Euro model is showing here. So Euro is expecting that uh, by Wednesday, we're going to be having the system with a pressure of 972 millibars. So uh, Euro is not expecting that this is going to become something very, very intense. But as we head to Thursday, here we see a definite weakening cyclone. We see a pressure here of 978 millibars. We don't see a whole lot of uh, moisture associated with this because we see that dry air wrapping around it and helping it to weaken. And then as we head to Friday of this week on the last day of the month, uh, here we have Euro showing now a pressure of 989 millibars. And then eventually we see the system making its way up into portions of Georgia and Alabama. So that is what is on the horizon for Ian. It is, is expected to become a very intense hurricane. And I mean, NHC expects that this is going to become a cat for with peak winds of 140 miles per hour. And that is quite significant. But again, fortunately, we're going to be having those unfavorable conditions resulting in weakening of the cyclone. So at least at peak intensity, it is not expected to be making landfall. So that is just some good news. But nevertheless, uh, if you're in Florida, please take the necessary precautions and stay safe. And also if you're in Cuba, uh, the Cayman Islands are definitely being impacted right now. So uh, hopefully things will be okay over there. And uh and of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on the cyclone as time goes by. And so that is really it for now. And so you can share your thoughts or if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. And of course, remember to always be with the wise.